Um, we have something in common. I went to high school. So I believe that y'all are in high school right now. Is that true? Yeah. Or soon to be, soon to be. Who's nervous about entering high school? Who's a freshman here? Raise your hand if you're a freshman. Okay, yeah, you have nothing to be afraid of. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be fun, right? Upperclassmen? Yeah. It's like awesome, right? Like world changing. Some days a little scary, but most days not. Not scary. Um, I did grow up in Brazil, it's true. Um, did any of you guys watch the World Cup? Yeah. Uh, Go Germans. I'm still working through it. Um, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I love Brazil. Um, I, you know, when I was in high school, when I think back to high school, I remember that I was an idiot. Um, I did not know <laughs> what was going on in life. And when I meet high schoolers today, I'm like, how do you, how are you doing it? Like, how do you know about life so well? Like, I was an idiot. Like, how are you living life so well? Like, if you can tell me later how you were making it through high school as successful human beings, I would love to know because I was an idiot. Like, I'm confessing that to you, okay? Um, my freshman year, I was homeschooled, and all I cared about was hanging out with my friends and reading. I, I don't know how those two work together, but that's all I did. So much so that I did not finish my first semester until April. When you're homeschooled, you do what you want. Um, so my mother sat me down one day and she's like, listen, Hall, you're going to have to like repeat your freshman year. And I was like, oh, no way. So like, not repeating that year of homeschool. And so I spent from like April to the first of June just taking tests in the second semester just so I didn't have to redo my freshman year. Um, please don't tell people that. Okay, top secret. I did my freshman year, guys, I promise. Um, and then my sophomore year, we moved down to another city in Sao Paulo, Brazil, which is like, I think, rated now like the third world or the third largest city in the world. It's a little crazy. Um, and while I was there, I went to a Christian private school. And then halfway through that year, I had to move back to America and go to a public school. So whatever kind of school you go to, I most likely have been a part of it, okay? <laughs> so I just wanted to start out saying I went to high school, we have something in common. Also, if you're a girl, we have a lot of common too. If you're a guy, we're all breathing air, so we're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> we are clearly all the same. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's true. I like you, what's your name? Okay, Nicholas, we can be friends. All right? No? Okay. <laughs> Can you swim underwater? Yes. Oh, who's this guy, ladies? Yeah, ladies? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't be until you're 42. Okay, great. Um, so, I just wanted to start out with that so you all knew that I was human. Okay, <laughs> write it down. She's human. Um, just kidding. <laughs> like we're not relevant to anything in life. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit about that. But what I really want to talk to you about today is something that I am super passionate about, and it's people. Okay, like, I love people. Um, I'm 100% extrovert, which means that when I need to recharge, I hang out with people. Some of you are like, can you please give me a dark room where nobody, are y'all twins? Oh my, you're twins? <laughs> that is awesome. Have y'all met the twins? <laughs> They're twins, that's exciting. I always wanted a twin. I didn't get one. <laughs> Don't know where she's at. Um, anyways, so some of you guys, like, you recharge, like, by yourself. When Holly wants to recharge, I'm like, hey, where's, where's the party? Like, where are there at least 15 people so I can hang out with them? Like, I love spending time with people. And I think that's just the way God wired me. And I think that God loves relationships, too. Like, he is all about them. Like, let's go back to, like, the beginning of the world, okay? We've got God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they are chilling, all right? They're not, I don't know what they're doing, really. You know, I went there. I know you're shocked. I look old, but I'm not that old, okay? All right? Um, so, anyways, they're chilling, and God's like, all right, we're going to create the world. And, you know, they start dreaming about it. They start coming up with what they want to do, and then they just start speaking it, and it's like, 
boom, you know, like there it is. Because he's God and he does what he wants and he creates beautiful things. I think somebody wrote a song about that. I don't like them though. Um, anyways, <laughs> total side note. Um, so God creates this world and then he creates human beings. Why? Because he is all about relationships. He's very intentional in his relationships. And so we've got Adam and we've got Eve and they're just like hanging out in the garden with God. Like, hello, I'm the creator of the world and I'm hanging out with my creation. Like, can you imagine how cool Adam and Eve must have felt? Like how special they must have felt? Like homeboy creator is hanging out with me, his creation. Like, that's crazy, Nicholas, it's crazy. It's crazy, he agrees, okay, he agrees. We're going somewhere today, this is exciting. Um, and so then, they're hanging out, and Adam and Eve are like, whatever, I'm going to eat this fruit. I'm not going to listen to God, I'm going to listen to my flesh. So they eat it, right? Relationship, broken. You guys know the gospel. We are all sinners. Um, but God, still being intentional with relationships, had a plan. And so time goes on, and like he meets Abraham, and he's like, hey, Abraham, how about you move somewhere else? Like... Not your home, but somewhere else. And Abraham's like, what? God, you exist? Awesome. I'll move. So he moves. All right? <laughs> Why? Because God sought him out. He was intentional with Abraham. And Abraham partnered with him to birth a nation. Okay? You're here thanks to Abraham. Write him a thank you note and give it to him when you get to heaven. He will read it. I don't know if he will. Um, <laughs> anyways, so like God partners with Abraham. Then Moses comes along, right? And Moses, he is just bebopping through the desert, okay? I mean, he's avoiding snakes, the most evil creation ever made. All right? Amanda, it's evil. Um, <laughs> do you agree? Um, and, like, he's just bebopping around. All of a sudden, he, like, sees this bush, and it is on fire. And yet, it is not burning, okay? You, you hear what I'm saying? Oxymoron. It's on fire. Yes. Yes. The oxymoron bush. The awesome bush. He sees it. He goes and checks it out. Turns out God wants to partner with him. Why? Because God is intentional with relationships. And Moses is like, I can't speak. I can't do this. Yada, yada, shmada, dada. And he ends up going with his brother Aaron to free his people. Because God wanted to take his people out of slavery so that they could go into the desert and worship him and know his glory and be with him. Why? Because God is intentional in seeking relationship. And so Moses goes, he gets the people out there out in the desert, and all of a sudden God's like, come up to the mountain with me, and let me give you some stuff, and the law. Mm -hmm. So they get the Ten Commandments, and um, he brings them down, and like, the people are crazy, all right? They have already <laughs> built their cow, and they're like, this cow is better than the God you just talked to. And it's just a really crazy moment. Um, but, but God was still with them. Like, the scripture says that he went with them by day with a cloud and by night by fire. Like, he wanted to habitate, habitate with his people. He wanted to be with his people. <coughs> so much so that he did everything he could to get them to him, to get himself to them. And then you get down to Solomon, and he's like, oh, I'm going to build a temple so God can just, like, be with us so that we can go and visit him. And so he builds this temple and like, like they have this service and God's presence comes down. And they're like laying out in the spirit, the original laying out in the spirit. You know, the people can't even go in there so much smoke. And so they, like God wants to be and dwell among his people. But it just, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And so throughout the Old Testament, we see picture and story time after time where God visits individuals speaks to them and he carries out his mission through people because that's how he's chosen to partner with us. That's how he's chosen to come near and be intentional is through relationship. And then we got homeboy Jesus. He's still in heaven. He's like, okay, yep, that's the last prophecy. All right, we're going to wait a few hundred years and I'm going to come down. Okay, like Jesus is ready to go. Like he's like, all right, I know what my father wants. Like I, I know he wants to be with his people. And so I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen. And so Jesus being fully man, fully man, comes down into the womb and then greets the people. All right, he had to go through some stuff, all right? All right, he's fully man and became a baby. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
he humbled himself in more ways than we can even imagine, all right? And so he comes, and he is finally with his creation. Okay, like he has not been with his creation since Adam and Eve. Can you imagine the excitement of Jesus? Like walking around and seeing the people that he so desires to be with. He's just walking around them, touching them, healing them, carrying out the Father's heart. The thing that the Father wants the most, which is to be with his creation, he's making that happen. But it wasn't close enough. It wasn't close enough. The, the fire by night, the cloud by day, that wasn't close enough. The tabernacle, it wasn't close enough. Jesus coming to earth and dying and laying himself down so that we could be joined with God still wasn't enough because Jesus said, he said, it's better for me to go back and be with my Father so that I can send you my Holy Spirit. Oh, dang. What does the Holy Spirit do? He dwells within us. Okay, like God wanted to be so close to us that he gave everything so that he can be close and dwell inside. That is nuts. Like, because if you've met yourself, and I know myself, we do not deserve the Holy Spirit to be dwelling within us. But I want to tell you something, guys. Until you get who you are in Jesus, you're not going to make an impact with the people around you. You have to know that God laid it all on the line so that he could come close, so that he could be in you and dwell within you. And when you get that, you have something to pass on to the people that are in your lives. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? God wants to be close to you. He did everything that he could just so that he could dwell within you. That's exciting. I think we should be excited about that because we do not deserve that. Okay? All right. In case you thought you did, you don't. But God loves you, so he still came. And it is so exciting. So what, what do we do with that? Like, why did God even bother to be intentional in being in relationship with us. Like, why Why would you do that? Um, if you have a Bible, and you have a Bible, which you should, go ahead and get that out. Um, we're going to be in 1 Peter. That was just my intro. Y'all are thinking, oh my word, she's going to talk for 14 hours. I could. I really could, but I won't. I promise. Um, so we're going to be in 1 Peter, chapter 2. All right, it's a good chapter. If you haven't read it, put it on your list of things to do this summer. Um, and we're going to be in verse 9 and 10, okay? Y'all there? Y'all ready? Yeah? You're totally ready to go, right? You're like, oh, I love this verse. What's your name? What is it? Denver. Solid name. There's a place in Colorado named after you. That's exciting. Okay, so we are in 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. Now, I need y'all to realize something. This verse is talking about you. Look to your neighbor and say, this verse is about you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read it, okay? Are you guys with me? I know, like, you just ate lunch and you're like, I'm about to pass out. <laughs> but don't, all right? Bucoma. Bucoma, they are real. That is why in Mexico, Brazil, and many other Latin American, South American places, they take naps after lunch. Siesta, fiesta. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So, 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. But you, who? You. you. Me? Thanks, guys. Whoa, y'all are so nice. Okay, <laughs> us. All right. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. Oh, snap. Uh, you are, you guys, all out here, and anyone else that puts their faith in Jesus Christ, are a people for God's own possession. As in, he possesses you. He owns you. He loves you. He chose you. You, according to scripture, are a holy nation. Yeah. 
that'll kind of redefine the way you look at yourself. So let's, you know, let's commit to see ourselves the way God sees us, all right? So, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. So that. Can everyone say so that? So that. So that. Oh my word. Can we say it with some like, mm? So that. So that. So that. So that. So that. <laughs> We are so unified. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> so that, so that, so that, you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, so God's plan from the beginning was to bring you into his family. It was so that you could be a part of his family. So that you could have an identity. So that you could know who you are. So, first of all, he did it for you, okay, like he, you, you were in darkness, and he made a payment, and he transferred you into his kingdom of light. That's incredible. Like, if you really stop and think about it, that's amazing. We were in darkness, and he called us out into his marvelous light, and he did it. He did it so that we, as a people, we as a holy nation, we, as a people that are possessed, owned by God, can proclaim the excellencies of the one. Who's the one? Jesus, that transferred us out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. Whoa, it looks like we all have a mission. I don't know. I'm just looking at scripture, and it kind of looks like God wants us to proclaim who he is to people. Would you, would you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how, how do we do that, okay? Like seriously, how do we proclaim who God is? How do we proclaim the excellencies? Like think about that word, the excellencies, not just like this cool person, you know? Like the excellencies of who God is. Guys, it's through relationships. And it's not just through any relationships, it's through intentional relationships. Have you guys ever like had a guy like you or girls, hopefully just you, <laughs> have experienced that? Like guys get intentional, right? Like they start like, you know, saying hey, <laughs> and you're like, oh hey, and then they start like, oh, I was at the market and saw some flowers, AKA I picked them from a field. Here's some for you, you know? Nicholas is like, please stop looking at me. <laughs> um, but but oh, there are some seats. <laughs> It's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. No, um, but, but they get intentional, right? Like, they, they start like saying, hey, you're really cool in this way. Or I recently had a guy start pursuing me and he like was so intentional, it was freaky. But like, it was good, it was fine. Um, but, but like God, he is so intentional and he wants us, like, like think about the storyline of what God did to be intentional to grab your heart. He wants you to be intentional with the people around you. Do you, do you guys know people? No. No. Hermit no. of 2014. Um, <laughs> hashtag Hermit. That's not me. Um, but you guys know people, right? Like you have classmates. We really hope you have friends. We, we are hoping, we are praying that you guys know a few people. Um, but you have, like if you're in sports, you have, you know, your sport mates. What do you guys call those? Your, Teammates. I have it written down in my notes, okay? I was a swimmer, so I know what it's like to have teammates. Um, you have classmates, you have your friends, you have your teachers, you have people that you see in the grocery store. Like, there are people that have been put in your life that God has entrusted you with. Okay, like, there are people that you know that are in your life for a reason. It's not just like, Oh, uh, they just happen to be in my life. No. Like, God is calling us as a chosen race, as a royal priesthood, to be intentional with the people that he has placed in our lives. And I'm going to share a few stories with you guys just to kind of make this real because you're like, what does, um, what does that mean being intentional with people? And I really struggle with this because I, I was discussing it with my, my beautiful friends last night. And um, I think they were like, Holly, I think it's because you... You just kind of do it and you don't really know what you're doing but you're doing it and so I had to like kind of think through 
how do I live my life? Um, but, but before I tell you like how I try to be intentional with people, can I just tell you how I used to not be intentional but thought I was being intentional? Can I just share an embarrassing story with you? Okay, thank you. Um, so I was like maybe 12. I should have known, okay, but I didn't. Um, so I'm 12 years old and we're in Brazil. And there's this girl down the road, and her name's Fernanda, and like she was my friend, okay? Like we hung out. And I was down at her house one day, and it, it really like bothered me because she like had this saint in her house that she would like pray to. And I was just like, really like, that, that saint can't do anything for you. You know, <laughs> like, I was like, not going to like save your life or anything, you know? And so I'm like trying to tell her about Jesus. And I'm like, listen, if this saint was real, like, um, if you set it on fire, it could save itself. <laughs> who does that? Like, who tells somebody to set their saint on fire? Like, why don't you go ahead and set your saint on fire and see if it can save itself? You know, like, I was an idiot. Who does that? Like, no cultural sensitivity at all. Like, I got a lighter. How about we light your saint on fire? And it was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Like, okay, you can maybe have more respect. Like, I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. No, I'm kidding. But I really, like, really, who does that? Okay? So, like, the heart was there. Like, I wanted Fernanda to know Jesus, but I didn't know how to tell her about who Jesus is. You know? Just like... Uh, uh. So, and I've done a lot of dumb things since then. Like one time I was in China and I thought that communism was over in China. Oh. It's still going strong if you didn't know. It's still like in there, you know? They're all about it. Um, and I was in college, still an idiot, okay? Like, I think I might still sometimes be an idiot. So don't trust everything I'm telling you today. Unless you do, and then you can. Leave it up to the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm in China, and I'm looking at this girl, and it's my first time ever, so cut me some slack. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you must be so excited now that communism is over. How is that then? And she was like, what? And I was like, oh, just kidding! <laughs> I'm like freaking out inside, like, oh, alert, 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 that was another country. <laughs> like, not China, you know? So, God has grace on people. I don't know if she, if she came to know the Lord I don't know. Probably not now, you know, now that I insulted her whole nation. Um, but, anyway, God has grace. <laughs> it's okay, you can still be a missionary. Oh, okay. It's okay. It, really, we're all missionaries, right? Because we are going to be people who live intentionally with our relationships. Um, and so what, now that you know that I'm an idiot, and I've done some pretty um, stupid things in the ministry, and know that I'm still alive, let me tell you some stories of maybe like how you can do it. But I'm going to take a water break. Is that okay? Mm. Joke, joke, joke. The twins said yes, so I feel, I feel like I, I can do that. Um, okay. So, does living intentionally, what does that mean? Or like, uh, I intentionally brush my teeth every day so I don't fit people. Good. That's, that's a type of intentional living. Um, but I'm talking about partnering with Jesus and what he's doing. Because have you guys read Revelation 7, 9 through 11? That might not even be the reference. So, <laughs> I should read it. Um, let, me, let me just get there. All right. Revelation is the last one. And it's not Revelations, because it was just one Revelation. Yeah, I went to Bible school. Not here, though. Mm -hmm. But it's a great school, so you guys should come. Hallelujah, amen. Okay, so, <laughs> Revelation 7, 9. Just 9. Maybe just 9. Um, After these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count. Hello? That's a lot of people. <laughs> Have you ever seen the people in church that are, like, counting people in the back? Well, they're not going to do that in heaven, because... We're not going to be able to count it, so if that was your job here on earth, I'm sorry. Okay, so a great multitude which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. Hallelujah. Okay, like when we get to heaven, every tribe, every tongue, Every nation, they're going to be all up in there. And we're not going to be singing heel song, okay? If we do, it'll be maybe once in like a 50 million year span. I don't know. I don't even know what we're going to do. But the point is, 
is that that's going to happen. No matter what, when we get to heaven, there are going to be people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. Okay, so that's like really exciting. But here's the more exciting part. From the start to finish, God desires to partner with us to share with people that he came close. Okay, like that's just his plan. And so if you want to be a part of making that happen, we've got to start doing life a little bit differently. We have to start asking the Holy Spirit what he is doing among our friends, among the people in Walmart. And is it uncomfortable? Um, I'm a 100% extrovert, and it is very uncomfortable, okay? <laughs> like, let me tell you a story. Uh, a few months ago, I was running super late because I grew up in Brazil, so we have no context for time. It's wonderful. Um, it doesn't really fly in the business world, so get it together, folks. Talking to myself. Um, anyways, so I'm like starving, and I'm like, okay, I totally have time to stop at Chipotle because Chipotle is anointed. So you stop at Chipotle. So I pull in, and like Chipotle is full. And so I have to park way down somewhere else. And um, I see this like Indian restaurant. And I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I love Indian food. Been to India, love their food. Um, <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm just gonna go in there. So I like order my food, and there's this like really cool, like beautiful African American woman like right behind the thing. And we're talking, and um, she's just tattoos, like, scars all up and down her arms, like clearly a cutter, and um, then I sit down, like Indian food's a little messy, so when I'm done, I'm like, okay, I need to wash my hands, so I'm in the bathroom, and I'm just like, Jesus, now guys, this is scary, okay, but we should all be doing it, um, Jesus, what is on your heart for the girl behind the counter, what's on your heart for her, do you have anything that you want to say to her? And you know what's even more scary is when Jesus talks and you're like, oh crap, I have to do something with that because he just said something, you know? And you're like, ah! And so I'm like, okay, all right, I can do this. So now you're like talking in the mirror, you know? You're like, okay, got a word. I'm just going to tell this person. I'm just going just gonna to do it, you know? Like, you're going to do it, you know? So I walk out and like, she's like on her phone walking out of the building. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I even a Christian? Like, did, can I even hear from God, you know? Like, here I am thinking I got a word for homegirl, and she's like gone. And I'm like freaking out, but I'm like, I gotta go, because remember, I'm late. So like, I leave, and then the next day I'm like, oh, I should probably go see if she's working. You know, because you're nervous, you know, because you just asked Jesus, like, hey, what do you want to tell homegirl? He told me, I need to tell her, wow. Um, and so I go back, and would you know that she is not there? So doubting salvation day number two, okay? <laughs> this is getting real now. All right, so I'm like, whatever, I'll just eat here, and then I'll go back and work on my paper. I'm eating, she walks in. The holy sweats start coming, and it's not what you just think. Okay, it's not, it's not the Indian food at this point. That comes later. So I'm like, okay, like, Ooh, I can do this. And so I go up and I'm like, hey, Tara, we met yesterday. And she's like, hey. Ooh, you know, and you're like, your heart rate is going way faster than it ever should. Ever should. You need to calm that down. Um, and I'm like, listen, yesterday I was praying for you. Like, nervous, talking like this. Like, no human should talk like this. Especially when telling somebody something. And uh, I'm like, I was praying for you and just asking Jesus, like, what's on his heart for you? And I felt like he told me something. Like, do you mind if I share it with you? And she's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, great. Oh, my word. And it was something so simple. It was so simple. It was, hey, God knows you. He sees you. And he knows what you're walking through. And he's walking through it with you. And she's like, tears, you know, and she like comes out from around and like gives me a hug. And while I'm hugging her, again, I hear the Holy Spirit speak and he says, ask her what she needs prayer for. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Tara, is there anything you need prayer for? Yeah, Holly, um, last week I went to the doctor and um, I have a tumor on my left breast and it's cancerous and it's spread throughout my whole body. Oh, okay, see you later, you know, like, what do you do, like, what do you do, you know, and like, you read scriptures, like, Mark 16, go into all the world, preach the good news, lay the hands on the sick, you know, see them recover, and you're like, just a 
do that, Jesus? Because I prayed for a lot of people and like, oh, guess what? They didn't get healed, you know? And you're confronted with who God is, the kingdom of God, how he wants to partner with you in that moment, and you have a choice. We always have a choice of whether or not we are going to lay our cry down and partner with what God wants to do, or if we're just going to walk away and not be a part of Revelation 7, 9 through 11, or if we're not going to be a part of proclaiming the excellencies of who our God is. And so in that moment, I'm like, I don't even know who spoke for me, because I was like, wow, you know, super nervous. I'm like, Tara, Jesus heals. Can I pray for you? She's like, oh, yeah, sure. Pray for me. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I pray for her, and then I leave, and I'm flying to go speak at this conference. And would you, would you know that my flight got canceled? It got canceled the day after Tara was going back to the doctor to see if her tumor was still there. So I'm like, my flight got canceled, aka God wants me to go visit Tara, you know, <laughs> go see if she got healed. And so I drive up to Rochester. Would you know she is not there? I'm like, homegirl, oh, when do you work? Because you are never here. So I leave her a note and leave her my number, told her I'm praying for her. On the way home, Tara starts texting me. So my roommate is reading the text and responding because don't text and drive. Write it down. Write it down. Don't text and drive. Thank you, Denver. Take him seriously. Sometimes I do it, so Lord, I'm sorry. Um, and anyways, she starts telling me that she went to the doctor and they ran all kinds of tests on her. And she's like, yeah, the doctor can't find the tumor and the cancer's gone. Woo! Wow. Woo! Crazy! Absolutely crazy. But what happens when we don't partner with God? What happens then? Like, what happens when we're not asking the Holy Spirit, what are you doing in my classmate's life? What are you doing in my teacher's life? What are you doing in the life of this girl at Walmart? Like, what if we don't ask? That means we don't get to take part in what God is wanting to do through the relationships that we have here. Are you catching what I'm saying? Like, God wants to partner with you in what he's doing. So last week I texted Tara, Tara, how are you doing? She's been heavy on my heart. We've hung out a couple times, um, and I just asked her, are you healthy? And she said, Holly, my tumor's back. I have cancer again. I was like, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? Do you say, God, you're crazy? What are you doing? I thought you healed her. Or do you continue being intentional with her? Do you continue to pray with her? Do you continue to go up to the ghetto where somebody got shot last week, right across the street, and minister to her? What do you do? You partner with the Holy Spirit because he is moving in your life and in the lives around you. And there is a lot at stake if we're not willing to ask him what he's doing. I remember one night I was in Walmart. And you know when you're in Walmart, you are not looking around. You're like, just coming to get some stuff and leaving. And there's this girl in front of me, and for some reason, I start talking to her. I don't know, maybe because I'm 100% extrovert. And so we start talking, and by the end of it, I'm like praying for her. Weird. And then at the end of the prayer, she's like, hey, do you know anyone that's like leading a Bible study? Like, I'm really curious about God. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I can teach you, you know? And so like, we start studying the Bible together. Her name's Millie. Like, a year later, after studying the Bible with her on Sunday afternoons, she gives her life to Christ. Like, guys, God is moving everywhere you go. It's just a question of whether or not you're going to partner with him. Okay? Like, living a life of intentionality means that you are constantly, not constantly, but in and throughout your day, asking the Holy Spirit, what are you doing in the lives of the people around me? And he's going to speak to you. And then that's when it gets scary. Am I going to obey? And if you don't know who Jesus is, if you don't know how worthy he is of your life, it's going to be a lot harder to obey him. And so if I can challenge you with anything today, it's get with Jesus. Like, start spending unhurried time with the one that laid down his life for you. He has things that he wants to speak to you. He has things he wants to break off of your life. 
he has like really awesome like crazy adventures he wants to take you on like like I've said a million times, like I'm an idiot. Like it's, I'm a, I just like sometimes don't have it together, but God still chooses to use this crazy person to bring his kingdom down because sometimes I happen to ask him what he's doing in the world. And so I wanna challenge you guys, like get time with Jesus, make it a priority. I wish so badly that in high school, someone would have set me down and said, Holly, listen, all this other stuff that's going on, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, I, like, when I was praying for you guys, like, I just, the, the phrase that kept coming was world changers. They don't know it, but they're world changers. <clears throat> and I want to tell you guys today, like, you are world changers. Like, the Holy Spirit lives and resides in you. And he is desiring to tell you more at a deeper level who you are in him so that you can proclaim who he is to other people. And so I want to take some time um, for you guys to get into your teams. And I've written some questions on the board. And um, I'm going to put those up right now so we can talk about them. Uh, Nick, you want to help me? Sure. It's a little heavy. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. It's really not that heavy, but I don't really need to do it by myself. Nick, everybody give Nick a round of applause. <laughs> Made an appearance at Impact Now. Yeah. 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 First of many. First of many. Um, and so I You're wonder... You're the one who wants to switch to the Poor guy. Lord bless him. Um, <laughs> so what I want us to do is I want us to just dialogue. Because a lot of this is like, oh, Jesus wants to partner with me. What does that look like? You know? And you guys know what your life is like better than I know. So, like, I'm just here to communicate, hang out with Jesus, get to know his heart, get to know his heart for you, and then share his heart with other people. Okay? Like, I promise you, your life will be a lot more fun if you will just listen and ask and obey. Okay? I promise you. It's a lot better to live your life for Jesus than it is for popularity and other things, okay? You can write that down, too, if you need to. So um, these are the questions that I want you guys to talk about in your team. And when I say talk about, like, be honest, be yeah. vulnerable. Like, I want you guys to, like, actually think through this, like, really think through it, okay? So, like, what keeps me from being intentional with other people? Um, team leaders, or at least just write these down. Everyone write them down. Get out your notebooks, write them down. Um, what keeps me from being intentional with people? Like, when I feel the Holy Spirit saying, go talk to this person, what keeps me from doing that? Um, and then the second question, are what are my spheres of influence? What does that mean? That means, who is around you? Like, if you're in theater, that's your sphere of influence. If you're in speech and debate, that's your sphere of influence. Um, if you're a track star, I don't know why I said track star, but if you're in track, like, that's your sphere of influence, okay? Like, you all are placed with people around you. So I want you to think through what am I involved in and where are my sphere of influences? And then the third question is, who are people in my life that God wants me to be intentional with? Because if I know anything about God, this is heavy on his heart. Like, he is desiring to partner with you. So there are people in your life that he wants you to share the gospel with, to love, like, to be intentional with. So who are those people? And the last question, what am I going to do about it? Am I going to be intentional? Am I not going to be intentional? Um, and just be honest. That might be more of a you know, inside question, but I still want you guys to talk about. So what keeps me from being intentional? What are my spheres of influence? And who are people in my life that God wants me to be intentional with? And what am I going to do about it? Um, and I'm going to pray for you guys, and then you guys can... How much time do we have left? I don't have my phone. Okay, so just kind of talk through those in your teams. Let me pray for you guys. Um, God, I thank you so much for the world changers that are 
before me. And God, I just pray that you would show them um, just what you're doing in their region, in their school, in their families. And God, that you would give them the courage to be intentional with the people around them. Yeah, just bless them, Father. Shine your favor upon them. Give them a deeper revelation of just how much you desire to be with them and how much you love them, Jesus. Um, we ask all of this in your name. Amen. Okay, go get in your groups really quick and talk about this.